We are live at twitch.tv forward slash G M S cut. Now, you know this because you're watching this, but why am I saying it? Because my guests would actually like to piggyback this into their own feed so their own fans can pick it up because we're not just here for me. We're here for them. We're here for the fact that my audience is hopefully going to become their audience and vice versa if I'm lucky. Tonight, I have very, very special guests, more people from the future. Now, I've often talked about my son-in-law, Jay Tamlin, and my daughter that are currently in Japan. They're 13 hours in the future, but I want to push the future further. 14 hours! Where can I find podcasters that are 14 hours in the future? In New Zealand. So tonight, I am speaking with the one of the Dungeon Master Game Masters and two lovely cast members from the Don't Forget Your Towel podcast. Now, if you've seen or know anything about the British sci-fi, come on, come on. You know where I'm going to go with this. No? Well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to spoil it. If you, if you type in sci-fi Google search and a towel, something British will come up and it's not a waste of your time. But just in case I'm wrong, I'm not going to say the title. So who do we have with us tonight? I have Isabel Cohen. I have Aaron O'Flattery. And I have Azul of no last name because he's, he, they're a little shy. Um, guys, thank you so much for being on the show today. Yeah, thank you so much for having us on here. So as I said before, here's our logo, the Don't Forget Your Towel podcast. Let's talk about the logo. I love the fact that you've taken a world and sliced it into <laughs> alter multiple worlds because the concept of your podcast is playing several game systems, several one shots on several worlds. Is that true? Yeah, so we we aim to play every RPG in existence or, well, die trying, and <laughs> it increasingly seems like the latter. <laughs> Have you ever seen a website called thetrove.net, which literally has hundreds of RPGs going all the way back into the 80s, 70s? Like There are a lot. I didn't realize oh, yeah. there's an RPG for yeah. everything, every movie, every TV show, things that you would not think would make an RPG tabletop. They've tried. There's a core book, whether it's splatted together or whatnot. So... The very first question that we love asking all of our guests here on Attack of Opportunity is how did you guys first know that you were geek, a nerd, one of us, one of us? Let's start ladies first with <laughs> Isabel. Gosh, um, how did I first know I was a geek or a nerd? Well, um, I ever since a young age, I would rather read than do anything else. Um, I remember I have a a strong memory uh, when I was uh, seven of being uh, in the classroom and reading a book before school started and then hearing this <clears throat> and I look up and everybody has already arrived they're seated in front of the teacher and I've completely missed like all of the morning stuff um, and they had just left me to read the whole time and I'd not notice at all um, so, uh, yeah, I've always enjoyed reading. Uh, I've got very into fantasy and uh, science fiction at a young age. Um, but I think it really solidified when I started watching anime at 11 and uh, decided that uh, learning Japanese was my utmost priority above anything else and any other schoolwork. Uh, so that kind of set me on the course. Oh, wow. Uh, you sound like my daughter who found those fan fiction sites and the 12 year old tweeny thing to do was go on there and start writing fan fiction based on anime or whatever. She did a lot of that. And she actually is in Japan right now teaching English to Asians following the dream. So hang in there, Isabel. You too could make it to, you know, actually from New Zealand, <laughs> Japan isn't that far. It'd be kind of like a weekend thing, wouldn't it? We just, you just pop over and. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 12 hours. 12 hours, <laughs> really? 12 hour trip. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, sorry, I just maybe it's just because the time zone. I know she's like 13 hours in my future and you're 14, so I didn't think it was that far, but I guess an entire entire time zone is, yeah. Yes, that's yeah. right. Time zones are vertical, like your very cool logo. Aaron, what about you? Yeah, I'm, I have a pretty similar background to Isabel, really. Yeah, always been like an avid reader. I also studied Japanese and watched a lot of anime. <laughs> Please talk into the um, cat mask. I can't hear you as well. <laughs> they're, sharing, they're sharing a microphone. I, uh... There you go. Um, so... Yeah, and then it wasn't till I met Azul that I found the wonderful world of RPGs. 
okay. uh, and video games and all that kind of stuff. And um, because I'm an actor, I just got like really drawn into RPGs and how fun and creative it is. So now I'm a proud TTRPG nerd. Oh, there you go. Now, I understand that actually I was just telling the cast members when I vet uh, a guest, I dabble, I jump around several episodes of their podcast. I try to quickly gain as much. Sometimes I barely have a week intel on them as their artwork. They like something about, especially if it's a multiple cast, lots and lots and lots. I had the distinct pleasure of listening to one of your first one shots, your fifth edition one shot, the Chrononauts, where you guys did this would seem to be a homebrew or sort of one of those fluffy little five page uh, you know, grab it and go kind of adventures run by Azul here. Yeah, I was. It was kind of like a. I, I used the online prompt, and it was. It gave me a prompt where a dwarf wanted to take over time, and I used that to just create something of a night. To be oh, honest, really. So the time, <laughs> the time wizards, all the clocks in the town, the sheep. That was all you. That was all me. <laughs> oh, that, no, that's great. So, how about you, Azul? How did you first? You were a geek, a nerd, um, a member of the Cats musical. Uh, oh, the yeah, under, the of understudy course. of Intero yeah. Banderas for Puss in Boots. <laughs> yeah, uh, no. Um, oh, I don't even remember. I remember getting into, I thought I was into video games back in the day when video games were a thing. I mean, even now, but when consoles were a bigger thing than they are now with the Nintendo and stuff like that. And I came across Vampire the Masquerade and I thought that a VTM was a video game and I got super into it trying to find out where this video game was but it turns out it was an RPG and I kind of just that was that was the moment where I said goodbye to the rest of my life and just I, jumped in. I remember when that hit the shelf like walking into a game oh store one day, yeah I know I'm old um <laughs> <laughs> I never played it always wanted to but uh never did but um uh moving on now we've got three cast members and I'm trying not to try something where not necessarily recycling the same question even though the answers might mm. be slightly different um so when we get talking about the actual content you're creating you're all on the same page so before we get there, and then you could, guys can each you know pick someone to field the questions, dabbling into personal histories a bit more. I noticed something in the credits that the ladies are both actresses and Aaron is a singer, because if you listen to anything, you have to listen to the first two minutes of each episode of that first one shot of Aaron singing this tavern song <laughs> with this medieval bardic music. And it's not that annoying green leaves, the regular old oh, DM goes, hey, guys, I've got tavern music. And you just want to like bleed out your eyes and, and kill someone with a mandolin. No, no, like this is cool, but it stays in the genre. And the words change each episode reflecting like it reminds me of the, the bard from The Witcher. Right? Ah, don't cool. toss your coin or something. The, the 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 way you sing the song kind of gets me that it's like this the singer knows them but not well enough to really tell you properly what's going on. It's like right. the singer has their own version of like, oh, I think you're this, and this is going to make a great song. And then you have the Witcher or like the Higgas going, that's that's not us. That's what are you talking about? You know, that kind of thing. And it's brilliant. <laughs> I We have uh, Matt Witt, who sings uh, front man for his dad's band, and he did our own Star Wars Order 66 parody song. And I called him up. Like, the I got, you got to listen to these guys, you know, and uh, we have to do a song, you know, that's your new job. <laughs> right? so we got we to we we do music. And th cool. that was all inspired by uh, the way you guys put your sh your first show together. Uh, uh, and it's light. It's it's pink and fluffy like the sheep, the time sheep that's bouncing around. <laughs> um, it's got, you know, the I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. Get into it because <laughs> you guys have moved on. You're trying to do other stuff. You guys have moved other cast members. So getting back to the question at hand, um, what came first, Isabel, the acting or the RPG? Yeah, so I have been interested in theater for most of my life. Um, so definitely the acting came first. Um, so I actually, this was my first time doing any tabletop. I'd actually never done any tabletop before this podcast. Uh, I was doing LARPing uh, quite a bit, which I really loved because it was kind of the improv side of acting and trying to become the character and really live it. Um, and I'd always stayed away from tabletop because I was afraid that it would be more um, dice rolling and um, a lot less of the actual like acting it out and uh, role playing aspect of it. Um, and so when 
Azul came to me with his podcast idea and I'd, I'd blogged with Azul before and I knew like his style. Um, I was like, yes, that's awesome. This is exactly what I would want from a tabletop type thing. So um, I was really excited. Uh, so yeah, the, the acting came first and everything else kind of spawned out of it. Right on. That, that's really cool. Um, Aaron acting yes. and singing, which I just went on about for possibly too long. I hope it embarrassed anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I love the headshot of you can you can you kill the feed so everyone can see this headshot oh sure if you're a ferris bueller fan it's like oh my it's god my... it's Gen it's jennifer gray <laughs> <laughs> oh well, you know, thank I, you. no i can't uh I've, I've actually sorry i've i've set this i've set up zoom so it doesn't show non-video oh, no. hang, on, hang on there it is there it is no you look you, you, you look like the young and talented version of Jennifer Grey. Um, well, thank you. Sorry, I and like I said, again, not to make fun, but it, uh, when, since we're doing the video and we're doing live, but this the bigger audience comes from the podcast. If I don't describe mm -hmm. everything, I flash on the screen. Oh yes. Half the interview <laughs> is lost to the actually the bigger audience, the seventy percent audience that uh, that snatches this up. Anyway, please come back <laughs> before I start <laughs> quoting the movie. There you go. Okay. Yes, yes, that's, that's oh. my that's my professional headshot. <laughs> yeah that's nice um Bye. so so uh singing what came first the chicken the egg the singing the rpg well you just said he introduced <laughs> yeah. the RPG. well acting came first i've been acting one way or another since i was a kid that's really my like first and truest love yeah um and then i got into singing um i mean because that's a that can be a big part of acting and especially at high school you know you do a lot of musicals and stuff so then i started really getting, getting into singing and doing singing lessons for several okay. years i guess and also fell in love with singing um yeah and then right. rpgs came right. much later than that okay we're gonna try something so i'm gonna do this and then back and forth because as long as one <laughs> no seriously as long as one of you are muted we won't get that echo ah right so cool, cool, so cool. right so the, but here's 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 the trick if isabel mutes fire a that's actually going to mute you two <laughs> yeah because right? no, no, got... my headset is on my laptop so the sound's coming yeah. from oh okay. yeah. yeah so if you just mute yeah if you yourself. mute when they're talking but i also need it the yeah. other way so like if you guys so it's pretty much we're going to put isabel on the trigger because she's in front of your computer right yes gotcha. so you go back and forth so i'm going to be i'm not going to constantly say unmute mute unmute but i'm going to be doing this if so if we can't hear you <laughs> signals you know they, they won't see this in the podcast in the in the video oh, no, they'll be yeah. like what's he doing but yeah the unknown signals what's well, yeah, the thing with a live idea. show you know like you you get as much tech worked out as you can and then you go live it's like you know that type of thing and why are we doing a live yeah. show i always had a deep appreciation for saturday night live as well as oh. the canadian version second city tv um i don't know if that was shot live but um that like I said that stage acting i mean you yeah. mentioned larping the stage acting type of thing yeah i did my share of several high school drama classes uh, <laughs> the type of thing so like i get it um you know the buzz the feed the, the interacting with the people i'm looking at mm -hmm. our I'm looking at our chat right now i see crickets but you know uh, eventually <laughs> um so that there's just oh, my I'm kind of getting overwhelmed here. You guys are such interesting characters. Now, why the cat jokes in the podcast? If you're just listening to this, <laughs> Azul is literally wearing what looks to be one of those homemade porcelain masks that he's painted himself. I actually painted it. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry. Aaron painted it as a gift, and it, it's just it does the nose and the cheek, so you just see his mouth, so we can see him speaking in the eyes, and uh, it does really go well against your blue hair, dude. I, I just gotta say. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that works good. Um, so, what about you guys are all playing together? Did you yeah. play before you started podcasting? Uh, or did well, you because you make it very clear I remember Isabel was playing the halfling and, and you guys were like ah you're the newbie and then Aaron's like no no I'm kind of new right and you get to do all these new things for the first time and someone like myself and again I recommend this podcast to you guys you get to share the the newbie experience with someone that, <laughs> that has great voice acting and does her character better than some other experienced players <laughs> Oh. Guys, I noticed those guys didn't show tonight because I would have been all over them with all their, their jokes, you know, like this guys. Um, but um, do you want to give a shout out to the male members of the uh, the cast? 
Yeah. Um, so this is honestly, we have here so many people, so we retain our cast. So at least for Chrononauts, um, our two co stars, I suppose, was Michael. Michael uh, Whiteman Michael and Whiteman. James Cooper. And James Cooper, yes. Okay. I just wanted to say a, a personal hello because their characters is my go to guy. The, <laughs> the, the foppy noble, the aha, yes, you know, yes, well, of course I know. Well, you know, you know. I mean, have you ever seen the movie El Dorado? <laughs> yes. Okay. My daughter and I can do the, If you actually put in the DVD the first 10 minutes, I kid you not, like from the from opening scene, the first 10 minutes is a running dialogue between the two characters from Spain to the beach island to, to like, oof. Like straight non talking, oh, like yeah. straight yeah. talking, ten minute dialogue, and my daughter and I can do it. I boom, love boom, it. Boom, 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 absolutely love. It. Well, we could maybe ten years ago when the movie's up. Now I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, just I'm sorry they couldn't be here tonight, but a shout out to them. I love the characters, and I like I love the way those get the guys think. And you're talking about now like a bigger cast, but we will touch on that soon hmm. so trying to keep this in chronological kind of not order uh, of how i usually have my questions arranged you guys talk about your exposure to nerdum how long you've been playing gaming what started the content where was the inspiration how'd you go from the the 99 consumer to the one percent creator is there a story there oh <laughs> uh yeah i mean you know covid happened and we all had you wanted to do it before that's, COVID that's ever true happened. i mean i'd always wanted to create something that i could actually share with people and i'd been itching to do something creative in the in the, in the like in the sphere of rpg in the things that i love really which is rpgs and i i, I listened to so many D D podcasts and so many call of cthulhu podcasts but not many podcasts that just keep on jumping around. And so I'd often find myself wondering, is this RPG good? How about this one? How does this work? And stuff like that. And I thought, hang on, why don't we just play it and, you know, just jump right into it. Um, and, and, you mm -hmm. know, I had friends and, and, and make something where people can listen to a whole variety of yes. RPGs to get an idea of what it might be like. That's brilliant. Yeah. I yeah. love it. No, I love it. Um, and and I get it. Like I said, most people start a podcast, one crew, five <laughs> cast members, one show. And even at the gate, I didn't do that. I like I want ten shows. <laughs> like I want to be I want to be a producer. You know, yeah. that's not working out very well. Um, oh. But, <laughs> but um, still plugging away and and like spinning lots of plates. You got spinning, uh, you know, spinning too many plates, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I admire the moxie that you guys were would take a cast and not just keep the same cast to try to change into a different RPG. I'm assuming you've gone after people that are into the new RPG that you're trying the best choice for DM or the best choice for like, oh, I love Cthulhu stuff. For example, yeah. Cthulhu, not my thing, but Ryan Messina, one of my guys. And they love that stuff, right? They play ah. all the video games. And, so, you know, like the right chemistry, the right people for it. So um getting back to the origin story did you come out of the gate with just like the one that i listened to and then went from there or were you making phone calls you know like the, the fixer that's always on the phone going yeah my people call your people and you're next week and you two come over here and we'll shoot this this week like did you just go how this come about i think aaron can answer that <laughs> okay. um yeah it was more akin to the latter really like once we had the idea for the podcast we knew we wanted to work with actors and voice actors um, and also just anyone who had RPG experience and was into making a podcast. So um, we contacted a bunch of people that we already knew and um, kind of met with people who were like friends of friends um, and talk with them about the idea and how things might run because we kind of knew that we wanted to have a pool of people to draw from. Um, one, because it's easier to organize when you're not, you don't have to have it scheduled around all these people. You can kind of get people to come in and out and people can be more flexible with their schedules. And also so that we could have um, a whole variety of people come on board and play with us and different people with different tastes to come in and play the different games. Um, yeah, so we kind of established our core sort of group of people that we wanted to work with before we ever started recording yeah. and then we started sort of planning 
oh, we want to play this game first and then we'll play this game. And, and as we got into it, we started um, sort of consulting the players a bit more about what we should play next um, mm. and getting people to, to kind of say, oh, I really want to play this game and I want to GM this. Yeah. Okay. Well, deciding that what's your favorite class race alignments, like you got a lot of you guys are just getting into this. I'm going to skip to the next question is where does this, where do you actually create the content? Do you guys do what we do where you're all Zoom calls over, over the place? Or do you still have, like, <laughs> you, you guys are part of that tight bubble where it's okay to mask up or not. And you know what I mean? Because you, you've been isolated from the world and you guys can still sneak each over and get the five people around the table. Like where does the magic happen? Where do you record? Oh, speaking of which, I have a an awesome picture that I'm showing now of your recording equipment. I love oh, this, yeah. the, this pink purple lit that shows the Zoom recorder. Those aren't cheap. Uh, you know, the microphones all together <laughs> holding up a D20, you know. Um, yeah, don't worry, Messina. They're all, only the tips though. are touching. Um, <laughs> maybe some headphones, some of these are these like foam line cases what's on the left here i'm just i'm just looking at this picture oh, i see i see the book the i see oh, I, actually oh i've got it you know what? i can i can make it my background because today's technology with today's advanced technology <laughs> I, I can do really cool stuff and should like do this oh okay. yeah so what here, there is we that go. what is that what is this thing? Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's the microphone case for what, which mic is that? Um, I think it's it was the sixth mic, just in case the, if we need the six, Yeah, it was more asking for the brand, but I don't this, this is really hard in looking at myself in the like camera and like figuring that I'm pointing <laughs> at the right object here. Um I, I just love this picture. Like I, uh, the lighting and the dice and everything, the way it's lit with that pink purple <laughs> is really brilliant. Like, I, just look at this. That's, that's oh, awesome. That's, that's oh, really yeah. good. That's really we, good. We, we literally spent almost an hour trying to <laughs> yeah, but this all up. <laughs> having that as part of your shtick or just having it out there with artwork that is referenced. Because when I typed in, don't forget your tell podcast, went to images on Google, these two images mm -hmm. popped up. That, ah. that sh your logo and this shot of that you guys have created, right? And uh, I, I really like that. I think it's uh, very clever. So you, you guys get credit for like a little bit of artistry. <laughs> the fact that you're bringing in, I want to say professionals, but like I said, you guys are so excited that you're new to the community of gaming. You know, yeah, you're, bringing, mean... you're bringing your, and you don't have to be an actress or voice at talent to, to enjoy this game or to do a decent podcast. You just got to be enthusiastic about it, you know, and the chemistry flows yeah. really mm -hmm. like, you know, um, Yes, you can tell those that have a bit more polished <laughs> cadence in their voices compared to those that are not in some of the podcasts that I've listened to, including you know, some stuff I've listened to your stuff. But that, sorry, in that, uh, my opinion, I'm not trying to isolate or single out. Um, <laughs> the fact that you guys have good chemistry and are really excited to play, that's what makes it enjoyable to an audience. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it enjoyable to me. Um, and cool. I, I think many people would agree. Um, can you guys conjure up possibly a happy accident? Something that did not happen. So, no, I'm not talking about the cool thing like um, Chrononauts should be our name. You know, hey, Carol, <laughs> was it, is, it, is it Carol? That was the halfling's uh, name. Is it Carol? Uh, no, uh, no. Coral, Coral. Coral, 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 sorry, yeah. Coral the halfling. And uh, Aaron, I also love your character. Um, the down, like she's a paladin. But she's into like, share your pain with me. No one hear about your suffering. You know, and I'm just, oh, I, I'm almost swerving off the road listening to like, you know, like, you know. And, and Coral, Isabel, when you do the halfling, um, so much presence from two lines when anybody talks to you and demands you do something and you say, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's brilliant. Um, anyway, my point being, um, you got to have fun and be enthusiastic and, and the talent flow, whether, whether you're like programmed for the talent or not. But what about an accident? Someone like there's get, you, everyone come on. Everyone's I, I really should have sent you these questions <laughs> early, <laughs> early, early of something that was not supposed to happen. And I'm not just talking about uh, how you dug up that cat mask at the last minute. That's awesome. By the way. But, um, yeah um i guess the at least from my my side um the most surprising thing for us the happy accident is that a couple of days into our 
creating our Twitter account and stuff like that. Um, we got contacted by a Kickstarter, like an RPG Kickstarter, who wanted to, who had listened to a few of our episodes and thought it was really good, and they wanted to, you know, get in, get get us to play the RPG. And that really, we were so excited. To be honest, we it, like they were from London, I believe, or somewhere in uh, in England, and we just had like three days and we planned everything, tried to do everything in the in the week, and that was uh, definitely an accident on our, on our part. We did not expect it, but it turned out to be super fun and super awesome for us. Wow, that's that's really cool. Yeah, like, yeah. like out of the gate. I mean, sure, this part of me that's been doing this for four years, going, "Good for you, good for <laughs> you," but no, honestly, like you got to be enthused when something like that happens. Like for someone to reach out and say, "Hey, you know," I mean, uh, I could tell you guys were excited when I reached out because you were just like, "Who? No, I don't work for Time Magazine. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> I'm not with Time Magazine. I am not some kind of big show. You know, you're, you're not. You're not going to be on the Seth Green show. Like, no, 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 no. I am. I am a big fat nobody, but." <laughs> <laughs> but you can take this content and you can show it to your own listeners and they will learn a little bit more about you that they might just not get from the show. And that is the yeah. set purpose. Yeah. And free content for me. So everybody wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's a win win situation. Everybody wins in this, this scenario. Yeah. Um, so speaking of uh, social media where they contacted you, where can we find you? What social media are you guys on? And can you list them? Of course, I'll get a list off, to, off of you and put it in the bio and the credits for later uploads. But off the top of your head, I know you're on Twitter because that's where I usually do my fishing for awesome people in the community. Yeah. Like you, such as yourself. Um, so we're, we're in most social media that we would consider in existence. Well, most of the main ones. So we're on Instagram and Twitter at DFYT underscore podcast. Uh, we're on Facebook at Don't Forget Your Towel Podcast. And you can also contact us through like email at DFYT podcast at gmail.com as well. Uh, we're pretty friendly, so and we don't bite yet. So um, <laughs> this is a friendly cat. Yes. Yeah, at least <laughs> not not in game. Yes. <laughs> No, I'm not touching that. That's just too easy to make fun of. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's not gonna... it's almost like a... You know, like guys are like waiting for me to dig in with a really big just joke. Really? It's like, no, I'm sorry. No, no, sorry. I wanna... um, so uh, this is a question that I haven't actually got to ask uh, everyone because though I do ask uh, lately because it is a new question. As soon as you put yourself out there, some people make a choice for an online persona. And I'm not talking about the gap mask, honestly. I'm just talking about like the, the you that's all like, hi, I'm GM Jeff Ball. Welcome to the show. And then there's just me when I'm talking to you. Like, would you please right. be in, would, could you please be on my show? Please, please, please. You know, that type of thing. Yeah. You know, uh, do you even are, do you find yourself taking it up a notch? Do you actually have something like can anyone vouch going, oh no, 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 this is not me in person. I just decided that, <laughs> you know, the the azul that is the DM has to be a certain way so that you can separate yourself. You know, and I'm not saying like from the fame or whatever, just a lot of people, they, they go online and they, you know, they're, especially when they're anonymous, right? They're just not themselves. You say things and do things you would not do. And I've come across more and more people and I'm asking them, oh, you've been podcasting for a month, a week, a year, 10 years. Right. And I get the same thing as a lot of people like, this is just me. You know, very down to earth people. And then you have someone going, oh, no, no, actually, you know, actually, I'm not British. I'm actually from the States. I'm from Wisconsin. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, there's a guy that does interviews and he wears a full on knight's helmet. I mean, the one that with oh, the wow. visor that looks like a beak, like the full on. And he sits there in a tux and it's like he's got this metal helmet and he's they've rigged the audio. So he sounds like he's not talking through a helmet. But he so. he's done this, you know, anonymous sort of these. I forget the name of him. It's knight something. And he sits I there really in a tux and, and then he talks to guests. He and I'm like, well, this is brilliant like this is really neat that you could do you know something like that um i myself uh back in the day someone uh asked about me dming and or you huh. know playing and i said oh i'm a dm you know i've been doing it forever i've actually DM longer <laughs> than a player and one of my friends went nah you're more of a game show host jeff than an actual oh. dm it's like well, I can't disagree with that because <laughs> just <laughs> just from the style, right? It's like, oh, well, I can't really disagree. I never said I was a good DM. I just said I like doing it. You know? And let's tell yeah. the characters what they've won, Monty. You know, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so um, whether you're acting, singing, or 
the weeks and months that you guys have been running, has there been any sort of, you know, I need to be this other person or this character besides oh. your characters? I know it sounds a funny question, but I'm talking about you personally on social media, that type of thing. I'm not, not like, uh, Isabel, you know me as Coral. Well, obviously, Coral, you've taken an aspect of a character that you want to do or a side of yourself and you do the shy, uh, you know, and it really played well. When I meet Aaron in person here, I don't see the paladin that wants to know about your suffering, but I get <laughs> yeah. it's a wonderful character, you know, even though she's all dressed in black. Um, but, uh, you know, is there any sort of instance with you or your cast members where there has been that sort of persona online versus your actual personality? Oh, that's a really hard question, Jeff. Um, I, I don't think so. No? I okay. Think we're, I think we're pretty well. Pretty ourselves. I, I would ex- like to I've, think. I've asked this question for 10 solid minutes. Sorry. I just... <laughs> no, no, no. It's, all, it's, it's all a good. new question. Uh, we're still fielding it, you know. Yeah, just feeling it out, just, yeah. you know, finding your way to it. Um, I mean, from I can't say I can't speak for the others, but from my perspective, I, I would hope that I'm the same person while I GM um, and play uh, as I am in real life. But well, I guess Erin, Isabel, what do you guys think? Um, I'll mute you guys so there's no noise. Okay. Um, to be honest, I think that we haven't had much of an opportunity to be different people because most of the time we are we're acting and of course we're that we're you know we're playing and then of course we're different people while we're playing but um we haven't got the type of podcast where we're creating a sort of parasocial relationship with our uh audience like we're not really talking directly to them or um and we haven't done anything like this before we were talking in front of people uh you know, not in character for the most part. So I think maybe we haven't had an opportunity to even explore if we would be different people or not. Um, So that'll be interesting to see if that's something that comes up if we start doing more things like this. Well, there's a difference of how casual you guys are telling jokes around the table on the podcast because you're with friends. Uh, yeah. trying to be yourself and answering questions with a perfect stranger that you've spoken to online via texting for two <laughs> weeks and met me like 10 minutes ago I in, know, per- yeah. in person, right? But I still like that raw feeling. Like I, I hit you guys hard with like, okay, let's do the tech. This is what you're going to see, blah, blah, blah. This is what, this is what, how I roll. Any questions? Don't, if you're not comfortable with this, we can kill this. If you're not comfortable with that, I won't do this, blah, blah, blah type of thing. This is me. And yeah. I'm sorry, I'm Canadian. Off we go. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, and we just roll with it because that I want the audience that are meeting you for the first time to react to me um meeting you for the first time because i have i have done people that i know personally and i have done people that they come back on the show because if you have such a large cast that's constantly growing i mean you guys a month six months go by you guys will have much more much more content with that more many more shows we gotta have you guys back on in six months again (laughs) with different cast members to like re-explore the growth of the podcast in general and meet more personalities kind of thing um and you so, can ask her the same question and see how what yeah, the answers are Yeah, I, I guess I'm just making the question too damn hard. Like, <laughs> I, I, I knew I screwed up when I saw Isabella drifting into her phone there. And I was just like, is, it, is, he, is he asking us a great question? Or is he like, no, no, no. I just knocked it off the table and I was oh, worried about okay. it. <laughs> so let's talk about how long have you guys been creating this content? Oh, uh, like, when did we start? <laughs> started around the middle of the year. It was coming out of the first COVID lockdown over here. Because I remember, you know, we had, we were putting in, we made like an FAQ document. We're putting in our COVID safety stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So it must've been around July, June. No, yeah, July, August. Yeah, yeah, around then. I mean, we we st- we released in September, I believe, at the end of September. So that's when we started up. So we would have started maybe a, two months before that. I think would have been when we started. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Sounds about right. So June, July. So relatively was... new. Like you guys are barely like a year mm. old. Oh yeah, we're barely we're six months old. <laughs> old. I think yeah, well, we're super new into the horizon well, of TTRPG. Like, you would know it by listening to you guys. Like you say, oh, we're we're new, and you know, we're just try <laughs> we're just trying this out. But you still really get a feel that you guys know each other, that you've, you know, that you seem to know what you're doing as far as what you wish to do. I mean, there's always yeah. that happy accents of like, oops, that's not going to work. Oh, sorry. Or somebody, yeah. some, somebody gaps about a character line or even the DM can be like, uh, yeah, there's some hesitation. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about 
the the entertainment that you guys wish to set forward is clear from the get go, and it's great. And Thank you so much. And, yeah. and six months old or not, it's like you guys are leaps and bounds against others. And again, <laughs> not to put anyone else down, there's there's such an audience out there for that raw. Uh, mm. grab grab a microphone in the middle of the table and as ah and then you really the mm. people get that sense of because they don't want an over polished or over produced show yeah they really feel like they're walking into a room and they walk by a pay table and people are actually gaming and with that sort of um shall we say poor man's podcast you really get that with with uh whatever affordable audio they can manage with whatever <laughs> recording yeah. type of thing um and then you get into people that the show gets popular in six months to a year. They get Kickstarters. Good for you. And, you know, and patrons start coming and if they're smart, they invest it directly back to the podcast and you start polishing, you know, better layovers, better, uh, better mics the type of thing to give the audience mm. more and better, you know, type of thing. You can't get away with that sort of style forever. If mm, yeah. you, your audience grows and they want to be better invested. Um, so this leads into my next question. If you've only been doing this for six months, how many one shots, how many worlds have you explored? in six months uh well i think uh what do you think um well i mean we've recorded a lot more things <laughs> being put out at this moment in time so um is that including things that haven't been put out or just episodes that have come out i'd like to know both actually because the behind the scenes like how fast you can actually put this out under covid conditions conditions that number would pretty be impressive too if you don't mind sharing yeah, yeah sure i mean we should probably caveat that we're very lucky in new zealand um that you know cool. we, we did have one initial long lockdown and then we had the second lockdown a bit later that was shorter but otherwise, you know, we're very fortunate to be in level one most of the time. So we can kind of gather normally yeah. without any extra, without wearing masks or anything like that. So we're in a privileged position where we don't have to worry too much about that stuff right now. Within your yeah. inner circle, like she's not talking about like, hey, everybody at the mall, let's let's hang out because we can. You're talking about your friends no, and family. Mall. Well, obviously we're not recording at the mall, <laughs> but yeah, you yeah. can go to the mall in New Zealand right okay yeah yeah it we really don't have that many like do we have any community cases right now i don't think i think think no oh, it's... there might be one or two but um yeah i don't think so yeah but yeah so obviously we are still um you know aware of it and uh masks are uh, necessary on public transport uh, they're required but other than that yeah life is pretty much normal okay so getting back to the actual numbers, how many shows have oh, yeah. you figured it out? I, I, I counted and I think we have eight or nine so far, inclusive of both uh, released and non-released RPGs. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, so yeah, it sounds, sounds right, right? Like we've so. got we've got D&D. &D. I feel like we've done more than that. Well, we've released the Dungeons and Dragons, Call of Cthulhu, um, the Extraordinary Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Um, I love that got, movie. Yeah. Sorry, it's also an RPG. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I, yeah. I, I love Terry Gilliam movies. A lot of people don't know Terry Gilliam went off and did stuff All like right. Baron Munchausen, Brazil. Um, oh, what's the other one? Oh, jeez, was not he? Something because even sometimes Python's in it. Um, you know what I mean? Like Eric Idle is in Adventures of Baron Munchausen. He's ah oh. right. He's the guy with the big legs yeah, that yeah. he left on the moon, right? I gotta, right, right. So he <laughs> borrows cast members from you know. Uh, yeah, time, yeah. time Bandits, my absolute favorite. Uh, I, I think I watched Time Bandits as well. It was a and, very good movie. And has John Cleese in it. Anyway, sorry, you uh, got oh, yeah, st just, started just nerding saying... out there, showing my movie <laughs> geeks. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. I think we'll. Yeah, we've also. And then we did The Wild Seas and Shiver, our yes. two new RPG Kickstarter related ones. Yeah, so Shiver is what we're currently releasing, and we've got. A, a number in the backlog as well that we're probably not going to yeah, say so out loud. How many, how many of them? I think three or four. So in total, three, nine. Four. Yeah. Okay. It looks other. I don't know. You would, you would, like, this is hopefully going to be listened yeah. to by your audience. You want to talk about the systems that are coming up. Maybe you don't want to reveal titles and cast, but could you give us a lineup of the next couple of systems that are going to be released at least? Oh, uh, I think so we're definitely wanting to release a few varied systems so we're thinking of releasing fate 
um, core eventually. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably the next one that's going to be coming up will be Everyone is John. Yes. Right? So our next RPG would be Everyone is John and then magical things. <laughs> magical things. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Right on. So what about, I, like, again, this might be an early question. You guys are only six months old, but there's so much thought. I love the starburst behind the D20, <laughs> which is behind the world and the ripple banner that is that supposed to be a Terry towel? Like, is the yeah. banner supposed yeah. to be a towel? Because <laughs> it, it, you just have that, shall we say, sheep woolish look to it. Yeah. <laughs> Azul knows what I'm talking about. You mentioned sheep. I, I do. It, yeah. <laughs> um, and... Um. Uh, it's 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 well thought out so i'm guessing that you guys have put a lot of thought into possibly merchandise coming can we put this can Honestly, we slap this no. on a t-shirt no like do you own um, the rights to this picture we are not really thinking of getting into the merchandise game at this point in time possibly okay. further down the road um but that's a lot of a different kind of work that we don't really know a lot about so oh, okay you no know, yeah <laughs> yeah well it's, um, but we have um, been very fortunate to work with it's just not, not amazing as hard people. as you might think to uh, just Ooh, slap okay. something Ooh. on a mug or a sticker there are websites that you just like <laughs> upload your picture they slap it on a shirt and sell it for you uh, yeah. All right, they, ta then. they take they take their six quid their six quid or ten up to twelve that's twelve dollars us or, <laughs> or fifty dollars canadian you know ship it out and then then there's whatever you want for your profit margin and a lot of these websites offer charities so ah. for for example, we use teespring.com. So if you go to teespring.com forward slash rollmongers, you see all the logos, even this one. Okay. Oh, yeah. On hoodies and t-shirts and stuff, but we're not looking to make money off it. We have the sort of two dollar to five dollar profit, and that there's a the dollar of that that goes to uh, MS uh, for charity. Oh, right. And then there's there's a bit of a margin that can be taken away so that our patrons can save 5% on the merch because it has to come out of our profit, not the $12 right. that Teespring wants and not the $12.50 it's going to cost you to ship it around the world. Because if you put those three together, no one's going to pay $50 for this yeah. show on a T-shirt. No, right? So we're yeah. trying to make it as affordable. But it's free advertising. People walk around with your stuff. It's a wonderful feeling. So um, what I'm saying is, guys, don't wait till you're really big. It's a great logo, even for yourselves, because you can you can upload it to them and just sell it to yourself and have your very own mug. Never hits, never, <laughs> never has to hit the public. Cool. Like yeah. technically this mug does not come off of Teespring. My wife took the picture to a coworker that does this type of thing out of her home oh, wow. and yeah. slapped that on for me. And I'm like, this is yeah. so cool, but it's such a small mug inside. I want to drink tea out of this. So I'm going to put my pens <laughs> in it. And she's like, it's, it's going to sit on your desk. I'm like, it's going to have a place of honor on my desk right there, <laughs> right there. it's going to be awesome. We're going to look at it and go give it the finger guns. Cause it's just so it cool. Is a nice, yeah. It's a yeah. nice mug. Yeah. Um, the logo, you know, my son made this. Oh, very simple. Wow. Right. And this is my company that I formed last year. So it can be in debt instead of me. Because <laughs> There's no money in podcasting. Let me tell you. Um, yeah. And now I've killed my uh, my camera feed. I'm all fuzzy. Anyway, sorry. Uh, I got to apologize to my listeners of this show because I find myself repeating myself the same stories to the cast really there's merchant and i just tell the same spiel yeah there's merchandise <laughs> and then they're like oh he's doing the merchandise bit i got time to go get a coffee or something right so so getting back Love to it. questions for you guys what is your latest project what are you guys like recording right now oh um i think we're actually going to take a bit of a break from recording during december because oh, well we do have one recording one last recording session coming up which is <laughs> Did I forget? <laughs> Don't forget. Oh, there's, there's two. There's two, I think. Aren't there? Well, potentially. That's a discussion for after the interview. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> but we at least have one. Uh, yeah. We've got to um, play the rest of our Don't Rest Your Head session. Oh yeah. Okay. It's a so Don't Rest Your Head is a very interesting uh, short RPG by Evil Hat Productions. Um, that's got a very insomniac kind of vibe to it. It's like a psychological horror insomnia kind of thing. Real, f and real, quite a dark uh, one. real Elm Street. Don't go to sleep because Freddy's going to yeah. get you kind of thing, right? Yeah. Very much like dreamy logic kind of situation. Like 
it's like a cross between Alice in Wonderland and I don't know something horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and something else with nightmares. <laughs> so, something else that's just so horrible. But you're into it, right? You're having a good time yeah. playing it. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, how about a couple of optional questions? And guys, you do not have to answer these if you do not wish. But mm. uh, personally, I've been, well, even before I started these shows, I would chat people up in gaming stores and that kind of thing. Um, and I always like to ask somebody what they did for a living. Like what paid the bills? What bought the book? Right? You're here to uh -huh. buy the same core book I am. You know, and I've talked to lawyers, doctors, ditch diggers, you know, the, the rich and the poor. Yeah. You know, not just... And we're making the joke over 40, overweight, but not quite. Um, studio is a basement, but it's not my mom's basement. You know, that that, that well, stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> that, well, it's a, it's a stereotype here in North America for, for a lot of gaming. So I just, I find it funny. Um, <laughs> what do you guys do for a living, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah. Um, uh, well, yeah, I, I do uh, consultancy. So basically your typical desk job, boring, thing. <laughs> very boring thing. No, no. Um, what, yeah. what do you consult for? Like, like computer tech uh, or? Yeah, computer tech basically. So okay. it's a bit of a, it's definitely not the kind of thing, <laughs> like the creative kind of aspect of things. No, I, you know, like if I, if I was mad at my computer and you don't want to talk to, talk to the tech guy, but you have to, and you, that be... and the blue hair and the cat mask popped up going, oh, how can I help you? My name is Zool. I can help. I, I would want to would keep be... on the phone and ask you a hundred questions. <laughs> I'd keep that call going She'd as long as it could. that'd be like the rest of my day. That'd be awesome. <laughs> um, what about you, Erin? Um, yeah, well, right now, I guess I'm kind of living the dream, the very poor <laughs> dream. Oh. Um, <laughs> You're a waitress, aren't I, you? Not an actress. Is that how it goes? Yeah. I, I work freelance as an actor and a writer. Uh, yeah, doing yeah, any acting work <laughs> I can get, voice acting um i do theater reviewing i do copywriting uh i'm creating a theater show at the moment and working on the podcast um i play like fairies and princesses at kids birthday parties you know a whole bunch of that kind of stuff to make ends meet <laughs> and you know satisfy my creative drives okay and last but of course not least isabel um, yeah, so I work for an international charity, um, uh, helping, yeah, uh, on the, the front end sort of things, help, um, speaking to and responding to the supporters. Yeah. Oh, right on. So like when somebody gets involved in the charity and they don't know where to, uh, you know, send the money or the details or, or find out more about it, what they're getting for the money that type of, you're the front end with all the info and you're the maybe not the face but the voice that uh, leads them to the end game in the, in the transaction yeah, is, that, is that what you're, absolutely you know? so absolutely can... anytime we have to speak with uh, our supporters or supporters want to so, speak with us they'll be speaking with me or uh, someone else in my team let's be truthful you're just kind of a cooler tech guy than azul like <laughs> <laughs> just, a lot of times it ends up being cool, a lot of our supporters support. are much are quite old as well oh, okay. bless them just slightly cooler tech support. okay i thought it was good uh so <laughs> he's, he's muted but you can hear him laughing in the background um guys i want to thank you so much for being on the show i know i must have missed uh, a bunch of pertinent questions i'm just quickly scroll, <laughs> scroll scrolling through here um uh i i gotta i gotta ask uh isabel th you're kind of a rare case like there's usually somebody that has a week a month a year something in tabletop now you're drawing from your acting experience so a lot of people are like no she's good you know you're good to go but uh how are you finding this going from zero to podcast no oh, let's just play for funsies like did they prep you at all <laughs> or what is or what I heard like oh you're like hey noob come on you're Coral you're like hi I'm Coral the halfling you know and I was like oh wow they just like yanked this poor actress out oh wait a minute she's an actress <laughs> that's what you do for a living right here's your script like uh, I'm just curious like how's it been for you um, is this like an acting job where they're like okay you get to invent your character you get to run with your character you know the the DM's kind of the director the story's kind of an open script. Do you find it like that? And you're drawing on your professional experience or is, is this just like nothing like acting for you? It's a game and these buggers did not let you learn how to play Monopoly, go. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. Um, I would say it's less like an acting job and more like an acting, um, 
like club or class in that it's a lot more of improv, which is usually something that you would like for the most part um, I, I would do as an exercise as opposed to like that I'd be paid to do. Um, uh. But it's, <laughs> but it is, um, so it's not entirely new to me, but um, the whole, the dice thing is the thing that I'm still struggling with. I, no matter how many times rules of a system are explained to me, I can't understand it until I'm actually doing it. And they're different rules each time because <laughs> they're different games. So I feel very lost in terms of all of that um but i am really enjoying it i really like it well there is one advantage in this game is like if you don't know you just say what you intend to do with your character and the dm will explain how to go about it the dice side or you know and if they're not they're not playing properly or very nicely i'll tell you that right you know you should never have a player dm go oh you should know this it's a move action to pick up your sword not a swift action like, no no one should be doing yeah. that to you so yeah exactly you know. and what and matters you might not always hear it in the podcast because you know we don't want to bore everyone but, you know every time that someone it's like oh what do i what do i do and it's not oh, just yeah. isabel as well we have there's, a bunch of new players there's a market um, for that there is a market for that when path edition when pathfinder second edition came out in august we had this crazy idea we were like ramping up for two new shows and we we're gonna do an evil and it was like i just had this inspiration and i'm like guys like we literally kind of like called up everyone stop the presses i have this idea and we're like sure you do you always have too many ideas jeff we can't keep up with all this crap we got going. no no hear me out hear me out it's like the book dropped in august right i'm like yeah it's like we'll give the core book to joe gibson because he can read this shit like overnight and he'll be like not a co-gm but a rules lawyer and but he won't play and i'll read the adventure so without that month of prep time that most dms and podcasts would need to launch their show like a solid three weeks or a month we're gonna launch in like one week go and we'll oh, be the wow. tip of the spear for right so age of ashes comes out as the first adventure path for second edition pathfinder august and we we uh, to make things worse far worse than podcasting which we kind of knew after a couple years <laughs> you tackle a brand new system with a brand new cast that is not used to working with your old cast jam them together and then i'm like let's live stream this because i just oh, got wow. fantasy grounds as a sponsor <laughs> what could possibly go wrong yeah it, it, it was uh it was a bit of a mess but it's turned out to be one of our biggest shows so thanks for those that have at least looked if not stayed with the show uh, it's hard not to love three dwarven cousins like they went totally old school for a new um, system they went old school three yeah. dwarven cousins come down five kings mountain to open a microbrewery and they just need cash startup cash oh there's an adventure will we'll help <laughs> yeah and it's the chemistry these guys have is great and we threw in cast members yeah. we rotated cast you know that kind of thing um so when i come across something like you guys where again this ambition to like we're going to try a the one shot's done everyone you have a week to read the new book or go get somewhat affiliated with the rules so that you can make a character and make it work because we're shooting the next thing on saturday like that that's gutsy like i don't think people realize <laughs> what you guys have taken on you know i don't that, think that's, we realize uh, it either <laughs> it is hardcore. a lot of work and especially for azul since he's usually the dm so he has to do a lot of reading <laughs> oh yeah uh, we try to make it as easy as possible for the players. We have like a pre-session before we do the recording that's just, you know, online on Zoom or something to get everyone acquainted with the rules in the world and get some ideas for characters, um, let everyone know what they need to do for character creation. And then we'll normally go over things one more time on the day before we start recording. Um, so hopefully everyone feels <laughs> kind of comfortable and I, I guess, you know, our cast is really made up of actors and people who are really experienced with RPGs or both. So everyone's just been so great at at jumping in and being able to um, just take whatever's given and roll with it. But that's what you guys wanted to do. That's the first thing you guys said is like, we wanted to present a whole bunch of systems to people that they can sample. And you guys are doing a great yeah. job. I've been speaking with Azul. What is your last name, sir? Are we allowed to know? It's Elisa. Oh, okay. Isabel Cohen. And am I saying this right? Aaron O'Flaherty? Because Fla there's no Flaherty. T. Flaherty. Irish. Okay, because there's no T. Flaherty. That... Fla Flaherty. <laughs> Flatterty. 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 Oh, sorry, uh, I gotta take. I gotta take one. Ear. I gotta hear myself speak to like do a decent one. Flatterty. Flatterty. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Flatterty. <laughs> yeah, flat bastard. 
Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for having us. And hopefully when we see you guys again, because I'd love to have you back on the show with different cast members, same cast members, new cast members, um, we will have more to talk about other shows or you mm. know what just having you guys back would be great so thank you so much for being on the show and we will see you all next time on attack of opportunity thank you so awesome. much thank you thank you so much for having us